Welcome to the Bard 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. In this guide, we'll cover all of your skills as you train to finally be able to listen to your own music better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this. to this. This series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV, or the MMO genre in general, or generally just still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. This is not meant to be a purely optimal guide. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you can research your job on. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 50 for Realm Reborn, level 60 for Heavensward skills, level 70 for Stormblood, level 80 for Shadowbringer stuff, and level 90 for Endwalker. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the general tab of your actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you're leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description of the card for a video on it. And keep the following in mind, patches can change jobs still. Be sure to check the description for any patch notes for minor potency changes or skill changes or any other special notes. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Bard is a flexible ranged DPS all about procs, procs being one skill activating another. By nature of these procs being random, Bard has become a very reactive job. Your rotation boils down to special song abilities and the rotation of those across two minutes. Some procs change based on which song you are currently using and alter the playstyle of the job for a little bit for their duration. Otherwise, Bard is known for their support, with both small and high power buffs. Those aforementioned songs give passive buffs to yourself and everyone nearby. You also have several different dedicated support abilities with different effects. And as a range job, you have extremely high movement. Just don't go far away. Your party can't hear the music if you're living in the Arctic. To play an archer, you either start as one, or pick up the class in the Gridania Archer's Guild after completion of your level 10 class quest as your first class. Let's get into the finer details of each skill. Level 1, Heavy Shot. This is a basic attack. It does 160 potency of damage to a target. And as a ranged DPS, we can attack from far away. Most all attacks have a range of 25 yalms, and will from this point forward only be noted if it is not 25 yalms. But quickly, we evolve into... Level 2, Heavier Shot and Straight Shot. Heavier Shot adds an extra effect onto Heavy Shot. There is a 20% chance, this is pretty low, to get a proc of Straight Shot ready for 30 seconds, which allows you for a single use of the skill Straight Shot. Straight Shot does a 200 potency hit to a target. As a result, our goal is to hit enemies with Heavy Shot until we get a proc, then spend that proc on whatever is still alive. You cannot stack procs, so while you can probably use Heavy Shot to kill weakened enemies due to the low proc rate, don't let Straight Shot Ready time out or get overwritten. The proc rate is low, but it happens. Level 4, Raging Strikes. On a 2 minute cooldown, this increases all damage by 15% for 20 seconds. When we get into combat, we can throw this up to do more damage for 20 seconds. Simple. Right now, we don't have much to use this for, but later on, the timing of this is going to be a lot more effective. For now, just use it on cooldown as you fight. Once you get some more attacks, aim to use Raging Strikes before you use it all. Increase the damage of as many things as you can, and aim to weave it, or use it between global weapon skills. Level 6, Venomous Bite. This does a small hit of 100 potency to a target. However, this comes with a dot, or damage over time effect. This dot does 15 potency of damage for 45 seconds. Dots work on server ticks, which are 3 seconds. So divide that by the timer, and we get 15 ticks of the dot. This is 225 potency, or 325 potency total. It takes at least 12 seconds to be equal to one heavy shot, 
which is a decent length of time. Later levels, this will be easy to achieve. At this low level, enemies might not live for even close to that. But get used to putting your dot up anyway. It's worth a large chunk of damage for every enemy you can get decent durations on. At level 6 is also our first roll action, Leg Graze. Ranged roll actions are a bit hit or miss, even for soloing. Put them on your hotbars anyway, but I will not talk about them here. If you wish to hear more about the importance of these actions, the card in the corner or the description will take you to a roll actions guide. We also have Second Wind at level 8, then Foot Graze at level 10. Level 12, Blood Letter. This is our first skill with charges, which means it can stack multiple uses. The charge time is 15 seconds, and upon using a charge, the timer for the next charge begins. In total, it's a 30 second charge time to get back to maximum charges. This is also an ability, so the low 110 potency hit is free damage rather than a loss over heavy shot. Be sure to throw this out at every opportunity, especially on enemies with a lot of HP, like bosses. Level 15? Repelling Shot. This is a class quest skill, the first of many quest-based skills. If you are not doing a quest for gear, do them for your skills. Going forward, I will not be verbally mentioning it, but in the top left is a denotion every time this crops up. Do your quests. As for Repelling Shot, it's not much of a shot. It has a 30 second cooldown and a 5 yarn range, which means it's melee based. It does no damage and causes you to leap back 10 yarns away from the enemy. Given how mobile you are, this has very little use. If a boss is about to do a point-blank AoE and you're inside it, you can hit Repelling Shot to get out of it. Or you can hit S or down on the control stick. It has to be a really big AoE, or you're really out of position for it to be effective. I won't say it has no use, but it's definitely more of a niche ability than it might otherwise be. It can be used in very fancy ways, would lead you to jump off a platform and into a death pit. Level 18, Quick Knock. This is our first AoE, or Area of Effect skill. It attacks in a cone in front of you, hitting all enemies within the cone for 110 potency of damage. The cone has a range of 12 yams, making it fairly large. But also consider, the cone originates from you. A lot of newbie bards make the mistake of using this skill like the rest of the kit, using it from far away. They end up only hitting one to two enemies in a group because they're on the exact edge of the AoE range. But melee range is the best place to be, and where you'll hit most enemies with Quick Knock. Just see how wide this cone is. You'll hit more enemies from up close because the furthest away enemies are also being hit. When up against two or more enemies, Quick Knock spam, but also consider dots in AoE. When a tank is pulling multiple groups, it's hard to aim AoE and hit multiple enemies properly. You can place dots on enemies, then once the tank stops running, unleash your AoE spam. Early on this won't mean much, but later on it can be quite effective. Level 20, Increased Action Damage. This really isn't anything special. All damage is up by 10%. The thing is, everything is balanced around this increase. It doesn't change how you play at all either. Level 20 also gives us the roll action, Peloton. The exercise bike wishes it with this. Oh, and then head graze at level 24. Level 30, Wind Bite. This is your second dot. Much like Venomous Bite, it lasts 45 seconds, but this does 60 potency on hit and 20 potency every tick of the dot. This makes it a 300 potency dot and 360 potency total. That means if you get the full duration of the dot, this is stronger than Venomous Bite. But most enemies who live long enough for one dot live long enough for you to put both dots on them. Prioritize Wind Bite on long living enemies, and Venomous Bite for short lived enemies. To obtain the Bard job, you must first reach level 30, and complete the level 30 Archer quest. Additionally, complete the main scenario quest, Self Management, which is at level 20 in the story. Return to the guild and the quest should be there for you. Level 30, Mage's Ballad. This is our first song ability, giving us a brand new song gauge. Using Mage's Ballad does 100 potency of damage to a target, and will buff everyone in the party for 45 seconds, so long as they're within 30 arms of you at least. Everyone affected will have their damage increased by 1%. Very tiny, but remember that it's 45 seconds. But it has an extra effect for us, Repertoire. 
songs work like dots in that they tick every three seconds. In this case, there is an 80% chance every three seconds to trigger the repertoire proc, and all three of her songs do this. Meiji's Ballad specifically has the repertoire effect of reducing the cooldown of Blood Letter by 7.5 seconds, or half the charge time. As a result, while we are in Meiji's Ballad, we'll be passively gaining extra charges of Blood Letter, up to 7.5 extra charges, but on the average, 6 extra charges. As a result, absolutely be sure to be spending Blood Letter during your time in Meiji's Ballad. We don't really have a full open it, but let's just do an example of what you can do, just to get you thinking about rotations and an opener. Though, to be fair, even at level cap, Bard has one of the smallest openers in the game still. Heavy Shot, Mage's Ballad, Raging Strikes, Wind Bite, Blood Letter, Venomous Bite, Blood Letter, Heavy Shot slash Straight Shot Spam. We do a heavy shot to start the global cooldown before weaving in Mage's Ballad for the buffs, which is why we also weave in Raging Strikes. Even if we got Straight Shot ready, we prioritize putting our dots up because they're that strong. Plus, the proc isn't going anywhere. We'll also throw out Blood Letters here before defaulting to just spamming Heavy Shot over and over. Anytime we can Straight Shot, we Straight Shot instead. Keep in mind, Mage's Ballad also gives us many chances at more Blood Letters. We cannot in any way predict how many procs we get in any of our openers. We can assume an average, but even that can be inaccurate. So just remember, while there are only two blood letters in this opener, we might see one immediately after the second or third heavy shot. Eventually the song will fall off, and so will the dots. Put the dots back up, use blood letters as you can use them, and put mages back up as soon as the cooldown ends. Our final roll action is already in. It's arm's length at level 32. Level 35, the Warden's Peon. This is our first dedicated support ability. On a 45 second cooldown, you can remove a single negative status effect from yourself or an ally. If no negative effects are present, you give the player a buff for 30 seconds so it will automatically remove the first negative effect it can. Summarily, this is Bard's ability to Asuna. Mostly, this is a healer's thing to worry about, but this is a very nice ability to have for helping your healers. If you stand in a poison puddle and get poisoned, hit Pian just to remove your own poison. It's free, and not for Kuzco, and can be weaved between GCDs. Healers lose an entire cast just to get you healed. Or maybe the tank has something to cleanse. Or a mechanic in the fight is cleansing a debuff. You can do it for the healers, and you really should if you notice it. Cleansable debuffs have a white line in them like so. If this white line is there, throw out a PN for whoever has it. If there's no white line, ignore it. You can't do anything about those. It's some other kind of mechanic or debuff you need to just let time out. Level 38, Barrage. On a 120 second cooldown, this causes your next single target weapon skill to hit three times. Any effects only apply one time though. You have 10 seconds after hitting Barrage to use it. So don't just randomly press it to prepare for later or something. Essentially, you triple the damage of your next weapon skill, which should always be Straight Shot. Barrage gives you a free proc of Straight Shot ready. It's guaranteed that your next skill after Barrage is Straight Shot, which also means you need to be wary when hitting Barrage. If you already have Straight Shot ready, use it first. Straight Shot, Barrage, Straight Shot. Overriding procs isn't the best idea and this one is entirely on you to do. And let me say again, single target weapon skills only. You cannot barrage a quick knock. Level 40, increased action damage 2. Just like the first one, you've gone up 10% more damage. This doesn't affect the playstyle of the job, just keeps you on par with a Realm Reborn balancing. Level 40, Army's Pian. Our second song in the line, songs all have the same basic effects. The differences are the buff and repertoire. This repertoire effect is reduce cast time and auto attack delay. You can have up to four stacks, each granting 4% speed, totaling to 16%. While Mage's Ballad has a wide curve up or down of how many blood letters you get, you're almost guaranteed to get all four stacks of repertoire at some point. 80% is still 80% though, so theoretically you could end up getting no stacks. 
But the odds are so infinitely small, you're basically always seeing four stacks. So for the duration of Army's PN, expect to be hitting Heavy Shot and your dots a bit faster. But it's only for 45 seconds. The order of her songs is Mage's Ballad, then Army's PN, then 30 seconds of no songs. Assuming a boss with constant uptime at least. Armies is a bit stronger than Mage's Ballad, so we prioritize that. Level 45, Reign of Death. This is tied directly to Bloodletter. It and all of its charges are shared with Bloodletter. If you use a Bloodletter, you lose a Reign of Death, and vice versa. The catch is that this is an AoE. It has an 8 yarm radius doing 100 potency of damage to a target and all enemies within the radius. And if you noticed, this is only 10 potency lower than Bloodletter. Bloodletter you use for single target because that extra potency does add up in boss fights. But the moment there are two or more enemies, use Reign of Death. And because tanks like to grab multiple groups on average, any and all trash mob fights will lead to a lot of enemies. This makes Mage's Valid extremely strong for AoE, and your best song for it by a mile. Level 50, Battle Voice. Another 2 minute cooldown. This increases direct hit rate of all players within 20 arms of you by 20%. This lasts for 15 seconds. The problem is, you must be singing a song to use Battle Voice. If you try to use Battle Voice without a song running, it won't let you. Now given how Bard works, this is basically never an issue, but you do need to keep in mind it always comes after a song. Similarly to Raging Strikes, you want to use this before going crazy with big attacks. The more things you buff, the better it is, and you'll be ideally timing it along with your party members. They will also be throwing out any of their buffs every two minutes, multiplying everything together for big gains. Otherwise, simply put, use this on cooldown where you can. But now let's go into a real opener and discussion about the opener. Given you'll be sticking with level 50 bard for a while, you'll get sync down, it needs it. Or at least something to get you going. Heavy Shot, Mage's Ballad. Raging Strikes, Heavy Shot, Battle Voice, Bloodletter, Wind Bite, Bloodletter, Venomous Bite, Barrage, Straight Shot, Heavy Shot Spam. Once again, we start with Heavy Shot just to get us going. We weave in both Mage's Ballad and Raging Strikes to get the buffs going. Another Heavy Shot later, we end up with Battle Voice, so all the buffs are up. Double weave in Bloodletter to start the cooldown while under all the buffs and potentially not losing any ticks of repertoire. Now that we have the buffs up, we put up Wind Bite and Venomous Bite, weaving in the second Bloodletter to have used both procs. Wind Bite is first, since it's technically stronger. With our dots running, we pop out Barrage for our triple straight shot, before we're left with just spamming Heavy Shot forever. But I'd like to once again go over a caveat. There's our two Heavy Shots, this is two potential chances to get straight shot ready, which changes the opener a bit if it's the second one. Let's assume we get to Venomous Bite, and we have Straight Shot ready. Instead of using Barrage, we would just use the proc we already have. Delay Barrage until after to do it as I established earlier. Straight Shot, Barrage, Straight Shot. The same goes for Bloodletter. We don't know when or how many procs we will get. Assume we will get a lot of them, but the win can change every run. This is the big flex point of Bard, and one you need to get used to now. I try to build muscle memory or otherwise direct you to practicing later level rotations as early as possible. That is the lesson I want to focus on here, needing to manage your straight shot ready and bloodletter. Follow the opener, but if you get procs, you replace heavy shot with straight shot, even if it means you delay barrage. And the biggest issue is, this is the worst point for Bard. Once we get into Heaven's Word, everything plays a million times better. So let's not hover on this for any longer and move on to the Karaoke Opener. Karaoke Openers are characterized by me saying the skills as I use them. This follows the pace of the opener exactly, rather than just listing skills off in skill order. So let's do this one. Heavy Shot, Mage's Ballad, Raging Strikes, Heavy Shot, Battle Voice, Bloodletter, Wind Bite, Bloodletter, Venomous Bite. Barrage. Straight Shot. Heavy Shot Spam. Let's get to Heaven's Void now. The job just feels so wrong without it, and you're gonna see why very quickly. Level 52, The Wanderer's Minuet and Pitch Perfect. 
Our third and final song comes with an extra skill. The buff it gives is a 2% crit rate to everyone in range. Repertoire can be stacked up to three times, but you only need one to be able to use the attached skill, Pitch Perfect. This is an ability, so we can use it between our normal attacks. With one stack of repertoire, it does 100 potency of damage to a target. With two stacks, 220 potency. And at three full stacks, you get 360 potency of damage. So stack one is 100 potency, stack two worth 120 potency, and the third stack worth 140 potency. This alone makes Wanderers our strongest song for single target fighting. When using Pitch Perfect, always wait for three stacks of repertoire. The only exception is if Wanderers is about to wear off, or you're otherwise not going to be able to use all three stacks. If you have three seconds left of Wanderers' minuet, throw out whatever Pitch Perfect you can. Better than just losing the stacks entirely. Some damage is better than none. Alright, so now we have our final song order. This is how we will use our songs up to level cap in single target. 45 seconds of the Wanderer's Minuet, 30 seconds of Mage's Ballad, 45 seconds of Army's Peon, in that order. 45 plus 45 plus 30 equals 120 seconds, or exactly 2 minutes. If we want to get technical, it's 43, 34, 43, but the point is we're cutting Mage's short since for single target, it's our weakest song. Half of a blood letter is not that good. The confusing bit is why we have Mage's Ballad in the middle if it's so weak. This will make sense later, but also there's burst phases to consider. Mage's Ballad, we're going to want to spend blood letter as soon as possible so we don't accidentally overcap and lose some. During Army's Pan, though, we can hold on to some of our blood letters. When we get back into Wanderer's Minuet, we'll be able to do our openers again, and if we have two bloodletters going into it, we get the benefits of all of our buffs. Just make sure you don't overcap. You'll get three bloodletters in the duration of Army's Peon, so you need to use at least one. Usually, two. For trash mobs, our ideal order is Mage's Ballad, Army's Peon, Wanderer's Minuet, going 45, 45, 30. Mage's is strongest for AoE, and Pitch Perfect is only single target, so Wanderers ends up being the worst for group fights. So cutting it short, we end up getting the best rotation for Trash. The issue is at lower levels. Trash mobs don't often last that long. It's only later that fights tend to last minutes to even get that much rotation time. This order otherwise goes across multiple different fights as a result. But that's songs, and I hope you build up the timing and muscle memory just fine. Going forward, we will see more to benefit this cycle, and be absolutely sure you're using the next song before the previous one ends. Might as well buff that 100 potency with the song's passive buff. Level 54, Imperial Arrow. On a 15 second cooldown, this does 200 potency of damage to a target. Right now, it's just a stronger bloodletter you can't get two stacks of. Right now, it's literally just a filly button. But later on, this is key. Get used to it. Level 56, Iron Jaws. This is a weapon skill doing a paltry 100 potency to a target. However, if you hit an enemy with dots on it, those dots will be refreshed completely. So now instead of needing to Wind Bite and Venomous Bite to refresh your dot, just hit Iron Jaws to send both timers back to max. Careful you don't let the dots drop off, as then you'll need to manually place them back on anyway. This only refreshes, not puts them on. Further, let's talk about snapshotting quick. If you have a buff running when you put a dot up, say Raging Strikes, the entire dot gets the boosted damage, not just while Raging Strikes is up. If you put Venomous Bite up when Raging Strikes has one second left, the full timer of Venomous Bite still gets boosted by Raging Strikes. As a result, we're going to be using and abusing this in the openers going forward. Level 60, Sidewinder. On a 60 second cooldown, this does 300 potency of damage to a target. That's it. This actually is just a filler skill you use every minute, on cooldown. The problem is, this is a leftover from previous iterations of Bard. It used to scale based on your dots, and made dots feel more important. Now it just feels pointless. But let's fit this all into our opener anyway. We got a lot of big changes here that make Bard feel a lot smoother and proper. 
so let's just get into it. Wind Bite, The Wanderer's Minuet, Raging Strikes, Venomous Bite, Imperial Arrow, Blood Letter, Heavy Shot, Battle Voice, Heavy Shot, Barrage, Straight Shot, Sidewinder, Heavy Shot, Blood Letter, Heavy Shot, Heavy Shot, Imperial Arrow, Iron Jaws, Blood Letter, Similar, but a bit different. We actually start with Wind Bite to start the dot running sooner rather than later. Then we weave in Wanderers and Raging Strikes to start building repertoire and even get the buff running. Venomous Bite comes out for the same reasons as Wind Bite, just to get it going, even without buffs. Weave in Imperial Arrow and Blood Letter just to get the cooldowns running. Here's where things get complicated. Heavy Shot into Battle Voice gets the buff going and might have given us a proc of Straight Shot ready. Then our next Heavy Shot might be Straight Shot as a result, but it might not. Depending on things, will Barrage or Sidewinder here? If this specific Heavy Shot gives a Straight Shot ready, use Sidewinder into Straight Shot. If we do not have Straight Shot ready, use Barrage into Straight Shot. Watching your procs is a big thing here. Whatever one you don't use, use after. If Barrage first, Sidewinder second. If you already have a proc, Sidewinder first, then Barrage second. From there, we have one more Blood Letter to use because of timings, and lots of empty space before we can weave Imperial Arrow again. However, consider Pitch Perfect. All the weaving windows we have here can be Pitch Perfect. Prioritize Pitch Perfect over Blood Letter. Delay Bloodletter as needed, we have time. Finally at the end though, we have Iron Jaws. This is here because of our dots. Remember that we used them before all of our buffs were up. Here we refresh them, snapshotting the dots under all of our buffs. Use the last Bloodletter we have, then we have nothing but filler left. Keep hitting Heavy Shot, use Straight Shot when procced, and Pitch Perfect at 3 stacks. Now let's carry Oki open at it. I'm going to include Pitch Perfect uses. While this is not guaranteed, if I hit Pitch Perfect, I'll be speaking it. Wind Bite, The Wanderer's Minuet, Raging Strikes, Venomous Bite, Imperial Arrow, Blood Leather, Heavy Shot, Battle Voice, Heavy Shot, Barrage, Straight Shot, Sidewinder, Pitch Perfect, Heavy Shot, Blood Leather, Heavy Shot, Heavy Shot, Imperial Arrow, Iron Jaws, Pitch Perfect, Blood Lover. So despite having small openers, they're no less confusing or busy next to other jobs. And it's going to get busier still. Level 62, Troubadour. 120 second cooldown with a 20 ohm radius. This reduces damage taken by yourself and all nearby allies by 10% for 15 seconds. This is much less situational than Warden's Paean. Anytime there is damage happening, this is a good skill to pop. Raid-wide damage is common from even basic dungeon bosses now. Is the boss about to do damage to everyone? Troubadour to reduce how much you all take. But another way is to not help the party. Instead, you help just the tank. You've probably seen plenty of tanks doing big pulls. They're taking a lot of damage with 6, 7, 8, or even more enemies on them. Pop Troubadour to reduce it and make the healer have less trouble. The tank should be using their own cooldowns. But one extra is always a nice thing to have. Especially if you are familiar with tanking and see they use most of all they have and ran out of cooldowns. Level 64, Bite Mastery, Caustic Bite, and Storm Bite. We've gotten some upgraded dots. Storm Bite and Caustic Bite are much more powerful versions of your dots. The timers are the same, but Caustic Bite is 150 potency on hit, with a dot worth 300 potency, totaling 450 potency. Storm Bite, meanwhile, is 100 potency on hit with a dot of 375 potency. In total, 475 potency. Putting dots on enemies as you run with the tank is better now more than ever. And hopefully you've been doing that for a little extra damage. Still takes forever to get their full potencies though. Prioritize Storm Bite on most enemies since slightly better. Level 66, Nature's Min. Another dedicated support skill, Nature's Min has a 90 second cooldown. This places a buff on a target, which can be yourself, increasing how much healing they receive by 20%. 
It lasts for 15 seconds. Once again, this is ideally used on the tank. There can be situations where other players would do well to have extra healing on them, such as the player collecting vulnerability stacks in bosses. But usually, it's best to use to help the tank get healed during trash, or difficult hard-hitting boss fights. Level 68, Enhanced Imperial Arrow. Let's refer back to the level 60 opener for this one. Enhanced Imperial Arrow has turned Imperial Arrow into a proc. Every time you use it, Repertoire will activate. This happens during all of your songs. And in our opener, we use Imperial really early. This grants us our first or even second repertoire of a fight, meaning we'll already nearly be able to use Pitch Perfect this early into the fight, and we'll get a second one later in the opener near the end, and for every Imperial Arrow after. The one thing you need to worry about is overcapping Pitch Perfect. You can only hold three stacks, and any extra are lost. If you're about to use Imperial Arrow and you're already at two stacks, you may just want to fire Pitch Perfect early. Sure, you lose the extra potency of stacking three, but it's a bigger loss if, say, at the same time as Imperial Arrow, your song procs a second stack, overcapping you to four. That loses an entire stack of repertoire, losing at least 100 potency. So basically, use Imperial Arrow if you have zero or one repertoire stacks. If at two or three, use Pitch Perfect and weave in Imperial after. During Mage's Ballad and Army's Pian, this isn't something you need to worry much about. Extra procs, but not as easy to overcap. Level 70, Straight Shot Mastery and Refulgent Arrow. Straight Shot is seeing a major upgrade to the much cooler Refulgent Arrow. It does 280 potency of damage rather than 200. It's a very big increase, especially considering things like Barrage. Nothing we do with this skill changes though, but it's much stronger and more important for you to always use Straight Shot Ready every chance you get which is also weird because we physically can no longer use Straight Shot. But that's it for Stormblood. Some very nice stuff, but nothing at all changed our opener. It's busier for sure, but there's still no guarantee of when we get Pitch Perfect. Still can assume an average timing, but it's not always accurate. Just be sure to put even more focus on Pitch Perfect over Bloodletter as we head into Shadowbringers. Level 72, Enhanced Quick Knock and Shadow Bite. Been a while since we properly talked about AoE. Enhanced Quick Knock gives it a 35% chance to have a proc of its own, Shadow Bite Ready. This is the Straight Shot and Refulgent Arrow of AoE. It hits a target with an AoE of 170 potency. All enemies within 5 yums of the original enemy are also hit. It's small, but very deadly if you aim it right. This is also a reason why you should have been in the melee range for AoE. You need to target the middle enemies in a group, not the back edge. But that's not all. Look at that, it says Barrage Potency. Well, Barrage still only gives us Straight Shot Ready. If you have the opportunity to weave in Barrage before a Shadow Bite, use it to boost it to 270 potency on every enemy. It isn't as amazingly strong as tripling the damage you do, but in AoE, 100 potency extra is a huge deal. Also, weird note, Shadow Bite is stronger than Heavy Shot. It's not worth using in single target because you can't proc straight shot ready, but it's funny. Otherwise, as I said, treat this as your AoE version of Refulgent. Get a proc, use it. Level 76, Bite Mastery 2. Stormbite, Caustic Bite, and Iron Jaws have been given a 35% chance to grant straight shot ready. This is not only better than the chance Heavy Shot has, but means you can now proc straight shot ready anytime you need to manage your dots. This includes in your opener. Your first heavy shot might now just be Refulgent Arrow. Well, I say that, but there's a reason the chance to proc is higher. Level 76, Heavy Shot Mastery and Burst Shot. Heavy Shot is now Burst Shot, doing 220 potency to a target and having an improved 35% chance to proc straight shot ready. You will now much more often be getting Refulgent Arrow in your filler phases. Level 78, Enhanced Army's Pian. This is a really big trait, and you should be happy it wasn't added to the Army's Pian tooltip. When using any other song when under Army's Pian, you will gain Army's Muse for 10 seconds. If Army's Pian runs out on its own, you will have Army's Ethos for 30 seconds. Singing another song within those 30 seconds will grant you Army's Muse. This Ethos effect is so if you're in the boss and it becomes invulnerable or leaves the arena entirely, you can still get the Army's Muse buff when it comes back. 
or between groups of enemies, provided it's within those 30 seconds. Anyway, Army's Muse scales in power, giving you a stronger speed boost depending on how many stacks of repertoire you had when Army's PN finished. One stack is 1%, two stacks is 2%, three stacks is 4%, and all four stacks is the much more massive 12% buff. Essentially, you're carrying the effect of Army's PN into your next song. This is why we have our song ordered the way it is. Because Wanderer's Minuet is when we use all of our buffs. We want to buff that section as much as we can. Again, I'll bring this up. 43 seconds, 34 seconds, 43 seconds. This is the ideal length of each of your songs. 45, 30, 45 to be simpler, but that's not as strong. Those seconds matter. And the order for the single target is Wanderer's, Mages, Armies. AoE, you do Mages, Armies, Wanderers, with Wanderers being 30 seconds. Level 80, Soul Voice and Apex Arrow. We have another gauge, the Soul Gauge. Repertoire now has a secondary effect, granting us 5 Soul Gauge every time it triggers. And given it's every 3 seconds, that's potentially 5 Soul Gauge every 3 seconds. The only use of this is Apex Arrow. This is a weird one, having a scaling potency based on how much gauge you have. To break it down, consider every 5 gauge to be 25 potency, linearly scaling. So 100 potency at the minimum cost of 20 gauge, to 500 potency for 100 gauge. This will spend the full gauge regardless of how high it is. It does a nice size AoE and a 25 yom straight line in front of you so a yet still different shape to Quick Knock and Shadow Bite. And generally, we want to only use this when the gauge is at 80 or higher. We'll come back to this, but bards I know and high-end resources say to treat this like a 60 second cooldown. There are some flex points with it in AoE, or the boss is about to die, but generally stick to 80 plus gauge only. And once again, our opener does not change. Our skills are stronger, they have higher chances to give us straight shot ready, and reopeners two minutes into a fight are buffed by Army's Muse. And ideally we'll use Apex Arrow there too. That's the benefit of Bard. While our opener can be different every different run, the general flow is the same for much of your time. And Wonka doesn't really step out of this mold either, though we will finally get some changes in it. Level 82. Quick Knock Mastery and Laden's Bite. Quick Knock has been upgraded to Laden's Bite, doing an extra 20 potency per use. And that's it. Cool animation and better shows how wide the AoE is. Level 84, Enhanced Bloodletter. This allows us to stack a whole three bloodletters and reigns of death. This is extremely useful for making sure we don't overcap. And during Army's Pian, I mentioned holding onto your bloodletters for when you get back into Wanderers. Well, 45 second total charge time means you're able to go into Wanderers with more Bloodletter stocked up. Or just spam more AoE and trash mobs. That works too. Level 86, Enhanced Apex Arrow and Blast Arrow. This is why we want to only use Apex Arrow on 80 or higher gauge. If we don't wait, we won't get to use the Enhanced Apex Arrow. If using Apex when the Soul Gauge is 80 or higher, which is 400 or more potency, it upgrades to Blast Arrow. The size and shape are the same, but Blast Arrow has a 600 potency AoE guaranteed. But it's 60% less to all enemies after the first. That's 240 potency, still a really big AoE hit. As a result, if you weren't doing it before, only use Apex at over 80 gauge. The exceptions still apply, but much less so than before. If it's the final boss, it's about to die, and you only have 70 gauge or so for a 350 potency hit, might as well make use of it. But anything below 60 is like, pointless. At that point you're losing damage almost. Level 88, Enhanced Troubadour. Troubadour has been reduced to a 90 second cooldown. This means more potential uses and more protecting your party from big attacks. This is especially useful in the harder content types, where bigger hits are even more common. Otherwise, just generally nice to have. Level 90, Minstrel's Coda and Radiant Finale. This is our final party buff, adding another feature to the song gauge. Three icons, each representing our songs. Wanderers, Mages, and Armies. Each coda strengthens our final skill, Radiant Finale. It has a 110 second cooldown. 
This is for making it smoother to use, and grants yourself and everyone within 20 yards a damage buff for 15 seconds. The strength of this is determined by how many coda we have, each one being worth 2%. However, because of it essentially having a 2 minute timer, and our songs being on a 2 minute timer, generally we're gonna always get the 6% buff. This only becomes a question for trash pools. Any downtime between groups can cause this to come up before getting a third coda, but that's less to worry about than you might think. With our final skill gained, let's go over our final opener. It hasn't really changed, but we do want to fit in Radiant Finale at least. And that extra bloodletter, but we'll see it in action. Stormbite, the Wanderer's Minuet, Raging Strikes, Caustic Bite, Imperial Arrow, Bloodletter, Burst Shot, Radiant Finale, Battle Voice, Burst Shot, Barrage, Refulgent Arrow, Sidewinder, Burst Shot, Bloodletter, Burst Shot, Bloodletter, Burst Shot, Imperial Arrow, Iron Jaws. So it's all the same as we start until we reach the weave with Battle Voice. We put Radiant Finale here despite it only being worth 2%. That 2% is worth a lot more when you're pairing it with all your other buffs and all your allies buffs. You're also ensuring that in 2 minutes when you loop back around to Wanderer's Minuet, you have all 3 coda for reopeners, and you didn't waste the first one. Otherwise the only other addition is the presence of a third bloodletter. Just remember this is taking up a weave slot that you may need to be ready for Pitch Perfect. Those will still happen randomly, waiting for 3 repertoire and use your straight shot readies for Refulgent Arrow anytime you can. And let me pull up the Adjusted for Prox opener again. Remember, any of these can turn into Refulgent Arrow. You can delay Barrage so you don't waste any Prox. All that stuff we already discussed. Again, fairly simple opener, but it keeps changing every pull. You just have to react. So really, all we have left now is to Karaoke opener. Isn't that irony? The song base job has little to no karaoke. Stormbite, The Wanderer's Minuet, Raging Strikes, Caustic Bite, Imperial Arrow, Bloodletter, Burst Shot, Radiant Finale, Battle Voice, Burst Shot, Pitch Perfect, Barrage, Refulgent Arrow, Sidewinder, Burst Shot, Bloodletter, Burst Shot, Bloodletter, Burst Shot, Imperial Arrow, Pitch Perfect, Iron Jaws. Things could be worse. And Walker actually treated Bard fairly well. They took out their earplugs. The job isn't dead, like a certain that Bard I know expected it to be. Thank you for watching this Bard 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I'm always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators. Or even go follow my Patreon. Have fun in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Anne and Ed Hogsley waste to your enemies.